Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. So there's two phases to the game. There's the fight phase, which we'll have up here where you're fighting the people. And then you have the city phase as you're moving down here. The first thing you do on a fight phase is you look at the power of the person. On each turn of this fight, you cannot roll more than two dice. So you know the rogues are, maximum usually you can have is five dice. When you're fighting the rogues, the maximum you're gonna have is two. And each of the gangs are gonna have different powers. What you're gonna try to do is, when you beat these guys, you gotta be able to beat this and this, and then one of these on the location for each player in the game. We're playing a two player game, so we have to defeat two of these. If they have a higher reputation than you, right now my reputation for the Warriors is four, and let's see, the Rogues are here, so their reputation is lower than us, so we only have to do one of these per player. If the reputation had been higher than us, then we would also have to do the one that says reputation. So we have to do three, but one of them would have to be the one that says reputation. In this case, that does not apply. So what I would do on my turn, I would have these seven cards in my hand if I am Fox, and I can play as many cards as I want. Each card will give you a number of dice, usually between one or two. The cards will also have powers on them, so I can use them for the dice at the top or the power. So when this is returned from the discard pile to your hand, look at the top card of the bopper deck. You may place it on the bottom. If I have brass knuckles, it can be any weapon. So let's say I want to use this, and it says if I have a brass knuckles, it can be any weapon. I don't need to, I could either flip over this card and you can use the weapons one time per fight and it could be say this one down here. So then we would take an X marker and put it on top of this saying I've already accomplished that. Then if the person's in my same neighborhood, which they are, they can also fight in the fight. Well, Vermin has Brass Knuckles also, so he's going to flip his Brass Knuckles over without playing a card, and he will be able to do this one, which has a Brass Knuckle or a Switchblade, utilizing that that is done. Now things are going to get a little tricky. So I'm going to look through my hand, and I'm going to say I want to use two of these cards for the dice up. Remember, I, maximum dice I can have against this guy is two, so I would take two of the dice and roll them. If my number is equal to or higher than a number, I can complete it. So I could not do the four because my three and two is not that high. So then I would put an X on one of these threes. Let's say I want to do the reputation three because uh, if they had higher reputation, I would have to accomplish that. That's not the case here. So I'm gonna do these two threes. That means both of these are done, one per player. I would only have to do one more. But let's say I would have ruled something and failed like say two twos. At that point, I'm knocked out of the fight. I can no longer fight in this particular fight. Then I would go to my hand. I would have to choose one of my cards and I would have to remove it from the game and no longer would come back in. And so my hand side would be even less. Now, if we're able to defeat this guy and able to beat him, then we would take all these off. The location would come out. Normally it would go on the bottom of this but because this is the starter one, it will come out of the game. Then the gang will go on the bottom and a new one will be flipped up. So you know who you will fight next. The location is not known, but who I'm going to fight next would be. If he's on the reputation track, let's say I beat this guy uh, and I won the fight, he would go all the way to the bottom. If I lost the fight, the gang would stay on top and my guy would move one down on the reputation track. If you get all the way down to seven and need to move off of the track, you will lose the game. So losing reputation is very important in this game. So that's how fights will occur. The second part of the game is the city phase, and that's where you can move down this. And this is a track that you can move down. You can move down as far as you want. Let's zoom in on it a bit. You can move down as far on this track as you want, but once you skip something, you cannot go back and do it. So these right here, this symbol, like an eagle almost, will give you a face-up warrior card. So during the game, so when I get to the warrior icon, what's gonna happen is I can take one of these face-up cards and put them in my hand. So let's say I wanna take this one, then I would replace the card. Same thing would happen if I went to the weapon spot, I could put one of these weapons 
and put them face up in front of me, and now I have two weapons. You can only have two. If you ever get a third one, you have to reduce one down. At the end of the fight, you flip your weapons back over, and they will be available to you in the next encounter. If you land on this spot right here, which shows cards with an arrow going up, you can take one of your discarded cards that you use in a fight and put it back in your hand. And that's how you can pick up cards from there. The only other spot on the board is going to be this subway spot. And that's just a free spot. If you stop there, nothing happens. If you land on the, now you can't go past this fight spots without having the fight. If the fight's already happened, you would take this off. It's an X spot. You cannot stop on and you would just pass through. But as a fight token, you must stop on it having a fight. And the fights would occur just like the fights I showed you before. Now, the only little caveat to this is when you step on these red line spots, you're going to draw a bopper card, which will be from this deck. If it's one of these with like really big reds on them, you're going to draw two cards instead. And what these cards are going to do is a lot of them are going to say, coast is clear. And that means nothing happens. But you're also going to have these cards. It could be the arrested cards or come out to play or the nowhere. Nothing happens the first time that you draw one of these. And nothing's going to happen the second time. But on the third time, and you have two of these, and you draw a third one, you're going to have to activate a set. If this is your third threat, each warrior discards a card, then you're challenged to a fight. If this is your third threat, roll a die for each of your weapons. If you roll one or two, move from the game. Then you're challenged to a fight. If this is your third threat, remove a random card in your hand from the game. You're challenged to a fight. So a lot of these will just kind of press the fight. So the more spaces you stop on which is fine, it will give you more things, but you have the opportunity to draw these cards, which could be an additional fight that you have to do, which could negate what you've already done. The last thing you can do is, on your turn, you can rest, which means picks up all of your discard piles. You don't move on the city phase, but then you have to randomly remove one card from the game, from your hand, but you're able to pick up all your discard piles, which could be very useful. The Warriors will lose if the reputation is down to 7 and they need to lose another reputation. They will have been caught and beat up. If they get all the way to Coney Island and they're able to win the Coney Island Showdown, then they will become the winners of the game. And that's a quick overview of how you play the Warriors. Remember, you start out with a fight phase here at the Bronx. Then you're going to move your way into the city phase and fight as either you come along the fight phases or... If you get those threat cards in here, that will require you to fight. And that's how you play the Warriors. If you ever challenge to a fight through the card player or whatever, the, whoever's the instigator can look at this and decide if they want to run away. And that's a fine choice to make. If you fight, the fighting would occur as normal. If you were to run away, you have to put one of these bottles out on the board, which can be a maximum of three, and then you would move down in reputation for each bottle out there. Let's say you already ran away from one fight, and you're placing your second one. That means we would take our guy and move him down to reputation, moving everybody else up. So that's a quick way to lose reputation, but maybe get out of a fight you're not prepared for.